Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a desktop computer. It's a little tiny desktop computer. It's about the size of a portable hard drive or maybe a, a smartphone, although a little bit thicker than a smartphone. But it's designed to run Windows 8.1 software. It sells for about $200 and uh, fits in the palm of your hand. It's got kind of the guts of what you would expect to find in a cheap Windows tablet, and that has some people thinking that $200 is even overpriced for this because you can get Windows tablets for around that price and they have touchscreen displays. But I think what makes this special is that it's so small, uh, relatively inexpensive, and it has all these extra ports that let you uh, plug in an external display, a keyboard, a mouse, a gamepad, a remote control, whatever else you like. So you can use it in a lot of different ways. It sells for about twice the price of a high-end uh, Roku or about twice the price of a Google Nexus Player or an Amazon Fire TV. But it runs the full Windows 8 uh, operating system, and so you can use it for XBMC, Media Portal, uh, Windows Media Center you would actually have to pay extra for. Um, but you can surf the web, you can run Microsoft Office, you can run Adobe Photoshop, you can do just about uh, anything you can do with a more powerful computer, um, maybe just not always as fast. So I'll uh, show you a little bit of uh, performance, but first let's take a quick look at the hardware. There's three USB 2.0 ports, HDMI, that's the power adapter, a headphone jack, Ethernet, power button, micro SD card slot, and that's about it. There's uh, sort of these silver gray sides, glossy black plastic on the top and the bottom. If you did try to pop open the case, which I managed to do once, but uh, haven't been able to do since then, it's not really, uh, there's nothing really to use or upgrade on the inside. It's got an Intel Atom Z3735F quad-core Bay Trail processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of storage, and uh, what you see is what you get. Uh, it's got 802.11n Wi-Fi, which is not as good at, uh, at holding onto a signal as I might like, uh, but it does have this Ethernet jack. It's 10 by 100, not gigabit, but uh, it'll give you a more reliable connection if you can plug it straight into a router. Or you could try using one of those USB ports for uh, an external uh, Wi-Fi adapter if you prefer. It um, works reasonably well uh, after I went ahead and brought a Wi-Fi extender up into my office because my router is a couple of floors down. And uh, so when I first started testing this, I found that I had no problem streaming HD video from the internet, but when, uh, but I would have some to spend some time watching the video buffer as the Wi-Fi caught up with it. With that extender, I don't spend nearly as much time watching that buffering. So if you wanted to use it as a media center, I'd recommend maybe uh, if you wanted to watch a lot of online video or listen to music from online, use the Ethernet or an external adapter. But if it's close to your router, you might get better performance than I got. I also wanted to show you the power adapter it is a very small adapter similar to what you might get with a smartphone and that's partly because this is such a small uh, device with a low power processor and it doesn't generate a ton of heat. In my tests it gets around uh, 50, maybe 55 degrees Celsius and no hotter. Uh, it does get a little bit warm to the touch, it doesn't have as much space to dissipate the heat as you would get in something like a tablet, but it only uses a couple of watts of power. So you could leave it on all the time, use it as a home media server or some other sort of always-on computer if you wanted to, and you've got this power brick that's uh, much more phone-like than desktop or, uh, or notebook-like. Go ahead and plug it in and show you a quick uh, couple of performance notes. Uh, you can find more details in a couple of other videos that I've done with this, but um, or at lilliputing.com. But okay, so we've got it plugged in there. We're gonna go ahead and connect a wireless adapter for USB dongle. I'm gonna plug in this external storage. It's a flash drive with uh, some video files on it. And let's go ahead and hook up the uh, HDMI. So we've got a 1080p display here behind it. And when I hit the power button, you'll notice that the Zotac logo uh, comes up in white, surrounded by a little blue circle. It's a nice little effect. Uh, you don't even notice it's there when the screen is off. And if you don't like uh, the way that it glows, you can actually disable this in the BIOS settings. So let's put you down. Let Windows boot here. And I'll go ahead and enter my password. Normally I type faster than that, but I've got one hand in front of the camera here. Okay, so we've got Windows up and running. Uh, you can see it is the Windows 8.1 operating system. I'm having a hard time getting it all in the frame here. There we go. Uh, 32 gigs of storage, not all of which is user accessible. Some of it is taken up by the operating system. And as I mentioned, we're running Windows 8.1. 
Uh, this is the 32-bit version of the OS, and it is possible to load other operating systems on here, but it's not that easy. Uh, I did shoot a video a while ago showing that I installed Ubuntu 64-bit software on here using a 32-bit bootloader because this device won't boot the 64-bit version otherwise. Wireless, uh, the Wi-Fi didn't work out of the box on this version of it, though. Uh, let's go ahead and fire up a web browser. Do a little multitasking. I wrote most of the print version of this review while using this device, and I found that, again, while it's not the fastest machine I've ever tested, uh, it does actually get the job done. So you can see we've got a video firing up over here. First, there's Same time. a family share pack. A family of up to 10 gets unlimited talk, text, and 20 gigabytes here. of data to share for only $100 a month. And now, check out Sprint's new unlimited plan. Unlimited data, talk, and text. Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and these are three remote controls which are made to work with something like the ProBox 2, which is an Android device made to work with the TV. So the idea is that you can use something like the ProBox 2 to run Android apps on the big screen, but since Android's designed for touchscreen interfaces on smartphones, this is the MK704, which comes from a company called Ryko Magic, and it has a QWERTY keyboard, air mouse functionality, dedicated keys for pretty much anything that you can imagine. So online video works just fine. Uh, local video playback works pretty well too. Let's go ahead and fire up VLC and play a file here. We have main engine start. We're done. So if you wanted to use it for uh, basic uh, multimedia type activities, I found that it, it can handle 1080p video, it can handle web streaming, no problems there. Uh, you're not necessarily going to want to use it for high-end gaming types of activities because it does have a slower processor, but I've had no problems browsing the web with a dozen tabs open, doing some light uh, image editing. You can use it for desktop style applications. You can use it to edit documents. You can even use it to do things that are a little bit more CPU intensive, like transcoding video. It's not as fast as some other machines at doing those things, but the fact that you can do it at all, I think is, is moderately impressive. Again, for $200, you could probably get a more powerful desktop PC or even maybe a more powerful laptop but you're not necessarily gonna get a device that's this small, has all of these ports, and is capable of running full Windows operating system. So I think that's really what makes it special, that's what makes it stand out, is the fact that it's a Windows PC that you can hold in the palm of your hand. Uh, it's a pretty neat little device. I've been pretty impressed with its overall, sort of all around performance and uh, versatility. So, um, if you're looking for a Windows, if you're looking for a Linux machine, it might not be the best choice because, as I mentioned, it does have that uh, that BIOS, which is a little bit locked down, makes it loading Linux a little bit tricky. Might be easier in the future if there's 32-bit versions of Linux, but the fact that it's limited to 32 bits is a little bit problematic. The fact that it has USB 2.0 but not 3.0 might make it a little bit less future-proof. Uh, it should be fine for storing media for. Uh, connecting peripheral devices like maybe a keyboard, a mouse, or a remote control, but if or a printer, I suppose. But if you really wanted faster media, uh, you know, faster data transfer speeds, you're going to want faster Wi-Fi, faster Ethernet, faster USB. Uh, those are things that you don't get here. So uh, you know, I guess I guess the moral of the story is sort of manage your expectations when you're looking at a $200 device. But uh, the fact that it works as well as it does still leaves me kind of impressed. Uh, if you take a look at the benchmarks in the print version of this review at lilliputing.com, you'll find that when I did audio and video transcoding and some other CPU heavy uh, activities, it's not as fast as some current Windows tablets because it does have that Z3735F uh, low cost, low power processor. But that Bay Trail chip is significantly faster than what you could have gotten in early 2013 or late 2012. Uh, Intel's low power chips have come a long way in the last couple of years, and they're not necessarily you know, rivaling a Core i7 processor, but they're probably faster than what you might have had in a desktop computer a couple of years ago if you didn't buy a high-end high machine. They're definitely uh, faster than anything you would have probably had 10 years ago, um, which I, I know is a low bar. but. 
uh, depending on what you're using. If you're using it for a media center, you're using it for a home server, I think it's a pretty uh, capable little device. If you're looking for an inexpensive, difficult to break because there's no moving parts devices, uh, computer for a kid or uh, just you know something you want to put in the kitchen or some other place where you might not want to put a, a big tower desktop computer, I think it's also an interesting option for that. So um, overall, I really like this Zotag uh, Z, uh, ZBox PI320 Pico computer. It clearly has a name that's longer than, uh, than the box itself. Um, and I like where it shows Windows is going. I think it might be an interesting time for little computers like this because uh, Intel is practically giving away their chips. I mean, they're charging money, but not a lot of money because they're trying to compete with low-cost processors from ARM. Microsoft is literally giving away Windows licenses in an effort to compete with Android and other low-cost software. And so I think uh, the fact that we're seeing a lot of tablets and laptops that are selling for around $200 and running Windows is, is uh, pretty interesting, but it might be a unique moment, moment in time. Prices could rise in the future if those companies feel that they get enough market share that they can start raising prices again, or we might see companies sort of pull out of those markets altogether if uh, they think that there just aren't profit margins to be made selling this low-cost software and, uh, or low-cost uh, hardware. And so uh, while we're seeing cheap tablets and cheap notebooks, I think it's interesting that we're also starting to see cheap desktops that are taking advantage of the same sort of low-cost uh, solutions, including free versions of Windows or low-cost versions of Windows and inexpensive Intel processors. So uh, this is, uh, I would bet, one of the first of several devices, possibly many devices that we'll see like this. Um, but for such a small device with three USB ports, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Uh, I'm pretty pretty impressed with what you get. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. You can find more details at lilliputing.com and uh, uh, check out some other videos on this YouTube channel to see how it works when running XBMC, Media Portal, uh, or Ubuntu Linux.